He's not just loving. He is love. What is love? It's God. It's love is what is perfectly and totally and completely and wonderfully and in some ways indescribably embodied in what God is all about. That he is love. And it's from this love that his characteristics of mercy flow. This idea that we deserve something for the choices that we made. He withholds those consequences from us out of mercy. And it's from which his grace flows. That he gives us so much. In fact, he gives us life that we don't deserve. As an act of graciousness flowing from his love. And although we're going to talk a lot more about this as we sort of move forward in our study of the Christian faith, I can promise you now that as you think about your journey as a Christian, that everything that God does to engage with you and to interact with you and to move you and to grow you flows from the fact that He loves you deeply. It's important that we learn these characteristics of God. It matters. We really need to know what God is like. But you know, left alone and all by itself, a kind of a discussion about an intellectual understanding of the personality qualities of God without more is frankly a bit unsatisfying. More than that. If you ask me, it's wholly unsatisfying to merely talk about the things that are true about God's personality in the sense that we're talking about those things. As though we're making a checklist of the personality characteristics of God. And here I present those and we cite a script of his portents and God is this check. And when we're done, we all have an intellectual catalog of the characteristics and personality of God. This would be good enough if I were helping you today to prepare for a pop quiz on the personality of God. And in fact, this is the brand of Christianity that many Christians ultimately settle for. To know about God. In other words, and this isn't an indictment of these folks, because frankly, sometimes I'm something on one of these folks. When they tell you what God is like, they are speaking from the perspective of what they've been taught about God. What they know here and have learned here and read here and accepted to be true in here. And not sharing with you what God is like as a result of and flowing from their experience. brings us back to that discussion we started with, of that person in your life that you're closest to. You can describe the personality and the characteristics of the person you're closest to because you experience that person. Right? So let me ask this. What's your experience of God? If you were to describe what God is like, not based upon something you've read, not based upon the checklist we've made, but if you were to describe God based upon your experience with God, what would you say? In what ways have you experienced the personality of God? I want you to form a, a growing picture in your mind as I illustrate with, with this. There's a little boy who has a dad. And this little boy really wants to know to be involved with his dad. And his dad is this dad who's got a study in the home. And the dad is always in the study. And he's in there doing very important stuff. And this, there's a door that's closed to the study. And the son knows that the, the father's behind that door. And over and over again, for a long, long time, the boy repeatedly and consistently is hearing from others things that are true about his dad. And he likes what he hears. I mean, he hears people tell him how loving his dad is, how tender his dad is, how 
gentle and patient and forgiving his dad is. But these are always sort of things he's just hearing about his dad. He accepts them to be true, and, and because he has relationships with other people outside that study, he sort of understands what love is. And so as he's thinking about his dad as being his loving guy, he sort of has a picture for what that means. Even while people say, yeah, you don't know love, though, until you know your dad's love. I mean, it's, it's something else. You don't know patience and forgiveness from us. Anything like it exists truly. Dad, your dad's wonderful. But this little boy's relationship with his dad consists of trips, kind of trips to the door. Right? And, and he'll go to the door, and he, and he really believes that dad is behind the door, and, and he knows that he has the freedom to, to kind of go to the door and knock on it and, and talk to the door, and that his dad will actually hear him. And though he never hears his dad talk back to him verbally, he, he comes to believe that his dad must be there because sometimes he asks his dad for things. Like he might ask for an allowance. And although he doesn't expect a ten dollar bill to slide under the door, he does begin to check under his pillow. And every now and then a ten dollar bill will appear there. And he knows instinctively that's from his dad. And so he'll experience his dad in, in these kind of ways. But it's always through the door. And no matter how much people tell this child, your dad is so loving, so tender, and cares so deeply about you, as long as that boy's relationship is that relationship through the door, he'll never know what that love really feels like. Unless and until that door is open and that little boy runs into that room and is able to sit down on his father's lap and experience the arms of his dad wrapped around him, he'll never really understand, even have much of a glimpse of what it's like to know the love and the tenderness of this Father. I think it's a sad truth that for so many of us, that's the picture of our relationship with God. We know these things about God. And we are firmly convinced of those things up here. But for so many of us, our experience doesn't shore up those things. Our experience doesn't demonstrate those things to be real. Those are things we accept by faith, that, but we don't have an experience with. I don't have a moment where I feel the embrace, where I feel the experience of being loved by God, or His tenderness, or His patience. We want to run into the study and climb lap of our Father in heaven. And not just know about him, but know him. And your heart may be crying out, yes. Yes. I want that. I want to experience God. I want it. But how? How and will or how will and when will that door swing open? How can I experience God? How can I go from experiencing things about God to the real deal? I want to try to sort of answer that today. And as I do so, I want you to know that I Treat everything I'm about to say with great humility because I will confess to you that the desire of my heart, the greatest and chief desire of my heart, is to answer that question for myself too. In my life, in my journey, what I want more than anything else is a deeper experience of God. Because I still feel, in a lot of ways, like that little child outside the door who just wants more, who wants more. He wants more. He wants to feel, to be with, and to know, to be known by God in a real, relational way.